Today is Sunday, March the 29th, and when I woke up this morning, I was really sad that I wasn't going to church, and I know that the reason I'm so upset that I'm not physically going to church is because I miss my kids. Um, all y'all were heavy, heavy on my heart this morning. That little flock, Mount Zion, my cousins, all y'all, and I felt like God was putting it on my heart to still do a children's church lesson for you guys via YouTube video, um, cause y'all aren't on Facebook, so I couldn't go live or nothing. But I was like, if I'm putting so much energy into making these YouTube videos with all this other content, there's no reason I can't put that same energy into making a video for my kids that I see every week that I haven't been able to see every week to still give them a lesson. So that's what God placed on my heart this morning. Um, I wanna go ahead and give all y'all a shout out before I get started. I won't save it to the end, but these are these are the kids that fell in my spirit this morning uh, at both churches. And like I said, my family. And if I leave somebody out, I am so, so sorry. Charge it to my head, not my heart. But this morning I was thinking about Leah, Kylie, Jeremiah, Kyson, Leland, Elena, Brooklyn, Marley, the twins, Riley and Bailey. And then if I go up a little bit more in age, um, Zayden, Jordan, Zay, Kamira, Trey, AJ, Cam, Brayden, Jacob, Sabria, Naughty Lou, and then my big, big kids, um, Gavin, Naya, and Caitlin. I might've already mentioned you, Brayden, you are a big, big kid too, but I really just, I still want it to do, and y'all, the devil is trying to get me to go inside because these bone bees out here are driving me nuts, but I just still wanted to do something for you guys. So if you see me hop or scream, it's because a wasp or a bumblebee bee was over here and I just can't deal. So with all that being said, I pray that y'all are enjoying what's going on right now as much as you can, but at the same time, I, I don't want y'all to be misled and thinking it's just this awesome vacation. It's real life stuff going on. It's real spiritual stuff going on. And as y'all's children's church teacher, I feel like I'm responsible to, responsible of making sure that you all have some biblical scriptures that are going um, with what's going on in the world right now. Y'all getting some sound advice and some wisdom because we all know that in times of darkness, people run towards the light. And as Christians, we are supposed to be that light. So I wanna make sure that y'all are prepared and conversing with your peers, whatever it may be, the stuff you may see on your different social media accounts. Um, I know we've all seen the Cardi B video, the coronavirus, so funny, right? But like I said, it's still real life stuff going on and I want y'all to be aware. So before I get into the lesson, wanted to do the shout out. I love y'all, I miss y'all, but let's pray real quick and then we're gonna jump in. And I'm gonna try not to be jumping all over the place because of these wasps and bees. So real quick, bow y'all's heads. Lord, we thank you for this beautiful Sunday. We thank you for waking us all up safely, Lord. We thank you for us all having a place to sleep, parents, food to eat, Lord. We thank you for all of it. We thank you that even in the midst of dark times, we still know that we have you, Lord. We thank you for your protection. We thank you for your safety. We thank you for loving us, keeping us safe, keeping our family safe. Lord, thank you for these kids. Thank you for their families. Thank you for their parents who bring them to church, who let them be in the classes, Lord, and want them to learn and grow up with these strong foundations in Jesus Christ, Lord. I thank you for them. I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. And Lord, I pray that what we talk about today, that what is recorded today, that it will stick in their hearts, Lord, and that it is something that they will always remember and something that they will be able to apply. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for this lesson. We thank you for this day. Can't thank you enough, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And if y'all wanna add to the prayer, I love when y'all pray when we're in class, go ahead, feel free to do that in the comment sections. Um, so let's just go ahead and get started. Before I get started, I'm gonna say there's three scriptures, um, one main scripture for the lesson text, but there's three scriptures because I've broken it out into three separate lesson activities. I did it that way because when I teach, I have a wide range of ages. It goes from five to 14. So I tried to do a lesson for my littles. I tried to do a lesson for my big boys specifically because usually they're all around the same age. And then I tried to do a lesson for my big kids. But then when I thought about it, it's really not all big boys that's in that middle section. So we have a littles, like a medium, and then my big kids, okay? So parents, if you're watching this with them, um, 
you'll know like which activity they should be doing and you'll know if they're capable of doing all three because you might have kids who fall in the whole age, age range so you decide what they should be working on if the parents are watching too um so with that being said before i actually go into the scriptures i just wanted to share with you guys um kind of like what it was like for me in a time like this when i was younger the only thing i could think of was 9 11 um which we all know was a terrorist attack it was not uh, a health pandemic like we're experiencing right now with the coronavirus but for me i was seven years old i was in second grade and i remember we were supposed to be going outside to play on the playground and they put us on lockdown and it was scary for me as a seven-year-old because I didn't understand. But at the same time, all the grown-ups around me, the teachers, I saw them whispering. I saw them looking worried. I saw some of them even cry. Like for a little kid that can put panic in you because, you know, we look to the adults to remain calm, to keep us from freaking out. And so I would say that's probably the closest thing I've had to what y'all are probably going through right now at your age with this coronavirus. And I will say that my parents did a great job at keeping us, um, you know, calm and not worried. But that still didn't mean I didn't hear different conversations, different comments on the outside that planted a little bit of fear in me, specifically for my dad, because y'all know he was in the army. But I was just worried because I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know like, who could be hurt, what could possibly happen to us at any given moment. And that uncertainty and that fear, like even as a seven year old, I remember that getting to me. So that that's another reason I wanted to do this for y'all because I want y'all to be okay and I don't want y'all worried or scared. It's a whole baby over there crying. Can't, I don't know if y'all can hear that, but she's cutting up, but I don't want y'all to be fearful, okay? So I just wanted to share that it's 2020 and we see that the coronavirus is affecting the whole entire world. And so, like I said, I feel like as the children's church teacher for y'all, I'm responsible for making sure y'all have some biblical scripture and some advice and some just wisdom in this situation. I don't care if you're my baby that's five or my oldest, like that's 14. I feel like I had to share with y'all. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and do the verses um, because it's like this. I don't want to make a 45 minute video. That's going to be really hard for y'all to watch. It would be different if we were in class having our normal, you know, 45 minutes, but I youtube i don't think y'all gonna pay attention like that are y'all so i'm gonna try to summarize as best as i can but with that being said parents if you're watching please use these scriptures and sit down and go over them with your kids and y'all meditate on them and help them to understand what's going on and i'm sure some of y'all have already done that most of y'all have already done that it's a wall <laughs> but just as a reminder okay it is a wall, y'all. I'm going to have to smack it with a special book. Uh, now y'all got some humor, right? <laughs> All right, so the first verse is, and it's back. Oh, y'all. Y'all. Don't do wall. I'm going to have to kill it with a spatula. Please stay away from me. Okay. I think he flew off. He's still trying to come back. Y'all might have to move inside. I do not do wall. Okay, hope y'all got a good laugh. Okay, first verse. First Thessalonians 5. 16 through 18. If you need to pause the video, write it down. Y'all know how we do in class, okay? Pause the video, write it down. Make sure you got your paper, your markers, your crayons, your pens, whatever you need. So 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, 16 through 18 is actually the one that I shared on Facebook. If you're a parent and <laughs> you're watching this, um, it's the one I shared and I said it was a sweet reminder. Y'all, this wasp keeps coming back. I'm about to just go inside. Hold on. All right, y'all, I seriously could not do. I'm in the garage, because I didn't want to lose all of the outside lighting effects. So I'm in the garage. We're going to keep pushing. I'm sorry for the distraction. So <laughs> the first one for First Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. Okay. All right, let me open back up to my notes, because I had to grab everything and take off. And I was saying, before the walls came, I posted this on Facebook this week for all the grown-ups, And I was saying how it was a sweet reminder. So I wanted to throw that in the lesson with the kids, too. Uh, it says, rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And this is actually going to be the scripture lesson for the activity for the smaller kids. Rejoice always, 
pray continually and give thanks in all circumstances. So God is telling us that no matter what's going on, he wants us to rejoice. He wants us to pray and he wants us to give thanks in all circumstances. So guys, even though the coronavirus is crazy, it's like a whole thing, we still should rejoice, pray continually and give thanks. This is his will for us in Christ Jesus. And something that I always talk about my kids at Little Fox, we know that God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, who is Jesus Christ. And I actually think that's the Bible verse of the day on the Bible app today. So look at the Holy Spirit. But we always have something and someone to be thankful for. And that's Jesus Christ. So that's, a, that's something we can always rejoice for, right? That how much God loves us because he does love us, right? We all know that. Um, so we always have reasons to rejoice. We always have reasons to pray. We have family that we love. We have different things that we're going through. Um, good or bad, you know, we always need to pray continually. Praying should be something that we always do. And we should always give thanks. For instance, when we were praying, remember I said, God, thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for this. Thank you. For that. We always have something to be thankful for. Okay. So even in the midst of all this coronavirus stuff, we, sh we can be thankful that we have a house to go to. We have parents that love us. You know, there's always something to be thankful for. So for my little kids, what I want y'all to do is write down what you're thankful for. It can be something, someone, um, your parents, your siblings, your teachers, some game you love. Miss Megan doesn't care. Just write down something that you are thankful for, okay? I want you to sit there and actually think about it and then write down a list of things that you're thankful for. On top of that, I want you to say a special prayer for all the people that you love, okay? So I'm talking to like Riley, Bailey, Leland, um, Bailey Bell, all my little, little kids, Leah, Kyson, Brooklyn, Elena, Marley, that is something that y'all can easily do, okay? Sit down, tell me what you're thankful for, and then say a special prayer for the people that you love, okay? If you're missing your teacher, say a special prayer for them, whatever it may be, all right? So, now we're going to move on to the next verse, which is coming out of Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 31 and 8. If you need to, pause the video, write it down. Take a screenshot, whatever it is. But Deuteronomy 31 and 8. It reads, He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Now, when I got this verse, I was thinking more so of my big kids. Um, Gavin, Naya, Caitlin, Brayden. I know that um, for Caitlin, I know being in eighth grade i'm sure this is not how you planned on your eighth grade year ending um i know that that would hurt hurt me a bit i would feel some type of way i would be upset i would be disappointed you know and it's it's okay to feel those feelings and um not even in just in that situation i know naya you probably miss your friends you miss seeing them every day same with brayden um, Gavin, y'all feel like y'all cooped up with your little siblings, whatever the case may be. I know y'all actually enjoy school and y'all have friends. And I know you might be upset that you can't see them, you know, for the next couple of months like you had anticipated. So that what I had in mind for you guys, um, Kamira saying, what I want y'all to do is I want y'all to write a letter to God and I want you to be 100% honest in that letter about things that you may be afraid of right now things that may be scaring you because i know y'all all enough to have social media you may be seeing things different conspiracy theories whatever it may be um like i said when i was little i was overhearing conversations and i'm like what like so whatever it is that may be discouraging you that may be making you afraid that feels like a disappointment anything like that i want you to be honest and i want you to write a letter about god about how you feel, not just those things, but just like how you feel in general right now. I want all of y'all to remember that we are a part of history right now. Like I said, I'm 25 and I've never experienced anything like this. This is definitely, see, just got a CNN update about the coronavirus. I have never experienced something like this where the NBA stops playing games, where y'all are going to school, never thought I'd be teleworking from the house. Like I never thought that it would be like this, okay? So I understand. Megan understands. I've had to sit down and journal and tell God, okay, I'm a little scared. You know, like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know how I should be feeling. Should I be worried? Like, is he coming back? Like, what's going on? So y'all just be honest. Be 100% honest. Write him a letter about how you feel. 
But what I want you to remember is, that's why I picked this scripture, he will never leave you nor forsake you. And because of that, see, this is another reason we all have so much to be so thankful for. But because he never leaves us, he'll never forsake us. We have to trust in that. I know it's a lot of unknowns. I know it's a lot of uncertainties, but we have to trust in that, okay? Don't be afraid and do not be discouraged. So again, that was Deuteronomy 31 and 8. And I picked this one specifically for my big kids. The same way how I wanted to use the First Thessalonians. Hold on, I tried to write them all down. How I want to use First Thessalonians for the babies so that they know to always give thanks, to pray and rejoice, okay? So this is the one I picked specifically for the big kids. So y'all write it down. All right. So now everybody has, not everybody, we're still missing a large chunk of y'all, which is my mediums, which is the average age for uh, all my classes. So now I'm talking Trey, AJ, Cam, um, Jacob, Sabria, Naughty Lou, um, Jordan, Zay, I'm talking all of y'all, okay? So the main lesson text and everybody, like I said, you pick which activities you want your kids to do, whether it's the all three of them, one or two of them, whatever. You pick which activities you want your kids to do or y'all pick which activities you want to do, but I tried to make them to where they fit certain age groups. Not to say that they excluded the other ones, but you know. So the last one, Psalms 91, one through 10, and I'm sure y'all have seen this floating around um, Facebook, my parents, and even some of my older kids who have social media, this is the one that we all keep seeing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read it. <laughs> it's 10 verses, so it's kind of lengthy. But remember, parents, please, please, please take these scriptures and read them some more and meditate on them with um, the kids, okay? Because this is long and I'm not going to be able to break it down on everybody's level to where everybody gets it and it, i'm gonna try my best but i'm gonna just try to do the hot points okay so please 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 please, please go over all these with the kids um i'll read it and then i'll give the activity that is associated with it okay so i got my handy dandy ipad and i'm gonna read it out of contemporary english version because like my kids know i gotta read it in a version that I understand, okay? And that y'all can easily understand when I'm reading it out loud. So Psalms 91 verse 1. And the title of this is actually called The Lord is My Fortress. And remember, the title of our lesson is My Place of Safety. I think I've already said that. I hope I've already said that. But the title of this lesson this, this morning is My Place of Safety. And it does come from Psalms 91, okay? All right. Live under the protection of God most high and stay in the shadow of God all powerful. Then you will say to the Lord, you are my fortress, my place of safety. You are my God and I trust you. The Lord will keep you safe from secret traps and deadly diseases. He will spread his wings over you and keep you secure. His faithfulness is like a shield or a city wall. You won't need to worry about dangers at night or arrows, arrows during the day. And you won't fear diseases that strike in the dark or sudden disaster at noon. You will not be harmed, though thousands fall all around you. And with your own eyes, you will see the punishment of the wicked. The Lord Most High is your fortress. Run to him for safety. And no terrible disasters will strike you or your home. Amen. 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 That's so good. That, oh, y'all. That's so good. All right. So let's try to run through it real, real quick before I give the activity. So the first verse, the live under the protection of God most high and stay in the shadow of God. All powerful. God is the one who protects us. Right. And what I found interesting. So I was sitting out there. It was beaming like them, the insects and stuff was flying around. But I had legitimately started sweating. And it says to stay in the shadow of God all powerful. When we think about it, if we're out in the sun, we know the sun has these harmful rays that can come down. That's why we wear sunglasses to shade our eyes. That is for what? Protection. Or if you're hot and you try to go stand um, under the shadow of a building or something, that is for protection from the sun's 
raise or whatever. So I thought that this was real cute. Like live under the protection of God most high and stay in the shadow of God all powerful. So that's that's kind of what I want y'all to envision. This, this whole shadow thing and protection. Okay. Verse two, then you will say to the Lord, this is our key verse. Then you will say to the Lord, you are my fortress, my place of safety. You are my God and I trust you. A fortress is a safe place. Um, I should have Googled it, so I'll give y'all a real definition. But when I think of fortress, like a physical fortress, I think of like my mama's in the house, which I'm at now. With everything going on, probably wouldn't have felt safe alone, which is why I came over here to my parents' house. This is one of my fortresses. Um, my physical church building, a church building should be a place of fortress for those in need, for its members, for the community. Those are physical examples. But when we're talking about in the spirit, our hearts, our minds, our souls, their safe place is with God. God who is all powerful, God who can protect it, God who is most high. Okay, that's our safe place when we're talking spirituality. So you are my fortress, my place of safety. And we all know that God is everywhere, right? So anywhere that God is at, we should be safety. We should feel safe. And as Christians, you know, he lives in us. So we should feel safe. I'm not going to try to go over into a whole new lesson, but he is our fortress, our, our place of safety. And I, I tied up the lesson, my place of safety, because I wanted y'all to take it personal. He is my place of safety. He is Megan's place of safety, but he's not just Megan's place of safety, okay? He's Leland's place of safety. He's Riley and Bailey's place of safety. He's Kaylee and Bailey's place of safety. He's Elaine and Jacob's place of safety. He's Trey and Kylie's place of safety. Cam's, AJ, Aiden, Kaisen, all of y'all. He is our place of safety, but you can make it personal. He is my place of safety. So when stuff like this is going on, you have to tell yourself that, you know, you are my fortress, God. You are my place of safety. Y'all get what I'm saying? Like, that's the point that I want to stress. That's why the title of this lesson is my place of safety and everything that's going on. You can always run to God. He is our fortress. He protects us. He is our place of safety. Okay. So I'm gonna keep it moving. He is, it says, you are my fortress, my place of safety. You are my God. And I trust you in all this. Are y'all trusting God in all of this? Can you trust God? You should be able to trust God. God has shown himself to be trustworthy to be faithful to be all of these things that make God who he is and we should trust him so in the midst of times like this we should know without a doubt that he is our place of safety because he is our God and we trust him okay key verse I could have kept going in on that one but that is the key for verse all right so that's the one y'all want to write down it's Psalms 91 verse 2 so let's keep going Verse three, the Lord will keep you safe from secret traps and deadly diseases. We can definitely classify the coronavirus as a deadly disease. No, just because you catch it doesn't mean you're going to die. But we do see that people are dying from the coronavirus. So it says the Lord will keep you safe from secret traps. So secret traps being things that you're not aware of, things that could cause harm to you that you, you're not aware of. Okay. And then he'll keep you safe from the deadly diseases, the coronavirus. Verse four, he will spread his wings over you and keep you secure. His faithfulness is like a shield or a city wall. This goes back to protection. He will spread his wings over you. That's a, that's a covering, y'all. Can y'all like envision that? Somebody spreading something, spreading his wings over you, covering you, protecting you from things that can come from the outside and harm you, protecting you from dangers, okay? That's what God does. Just imagine him taking his wings, placing it over you, placing it over your family, placing it over your house. That's what God does. He covers us. He protects us. In that covering, we are safe and we are protected, okay? It says he'll keep you secure. His faithfulness is like a shield or a city wall from a little boys who like, um, you know, uh, castle dungeon type stuff. I don't really know. But think about it. You have a castle and you have uh, like a moat, I think. I don't don't let me get it wrong, y'all. Comment down below what, what I messed up. But then they will build like these little tower things, right? Around the castle so nothing can get in. Y'all see what I'm doing? It's like a shield or a city wall. So in that example, that would be a city wall, right? Something that's keeping the stuff outside of the city from getting in the city and harming it, right? Or a shield. If you're fighting, you know, swords, all that stuff, you got a shield. The shield keeps somebody else's 
uh, sword from hitting you, right? It's protection. It's like a protective barrier. It's a layer of protection. And as Christians, that is God to us, okay? Okay, verse five. You don't need to worry about dangers at night or arrows during the day. Um, I don't know why I keep envisioning castles and stuff, but uh, back to that same example. Think about like if somebody was trying to shoot over that wall with arrows because now they know you have like this barrier right and now they're gonna try to shoot trade bow and arrows over the wall right to harm you but with god you still don't have to worry about that you don't have to worry about any kind of attacks that may come at the uh did i get yeah you don't have to worry about any type of attacks that may happen at night or dangers of the night or arrows by day any tactics that are out to harm you you don't have to worry about that with god okay you do not have to worry about that um Verse six, and you won't fear diseases that strike in the dark or sudden disaster at noon. Back to the coronavirus. I feel like it came out of nowhere. Let me know what y'all think down below in the comment sections, but it feels like it came out of nowhere. It struck suddenly. Don't get me wrong. We were all aware that it was in China, but I did not personally think it would come over here like that and turn into this global pandemic. So that's a good example of a disease that strikes in the night or suddenly. Okay. Verse seven, you will not be harmed the thousands fall all around you um all my kids know i keep it real people are dying from the coronavirus i'm pretty sure the amount of deaths in the united states has gone up in the thousands so i mean this is just actual factuals you will not be harmed though thousands fall all around you we're all safe we're all healthy and even if you know you were to catch it god forbid you'd still be safe because god is still that protective barrier so yeah don't worry about getting harmed. It says you will not be harmed. Though thousands fall all around you. They are falling all around us, but we will not be harmed. Um, and with your own eyes, you will see the punishment of the wicked. Verse nine, the Lord most high is your fortress. So that's our second time hearing that word, right? So that's, the scripture started off saying you are my fortress. And so now we're in verse nine and it's saying the Lord most high is your fortress. Remember, that's your place of safety. A place you can go to be safe, to feel protected, okay? The Lord, the most high, he is the most high. Guys, I know a lot's going on, but God is still in control. He's still in control. Um, the most high is your fortress. Run to him for safety. Like I said, um, I ran to my mom and them to feel safe during all of this. Their house is my fortress. But when we're looking at things in the grand scheme of things, we should run to God for that safety. We should run to God to be that fortress like i said for our minds our hearts our souls all of it um verse 10 and no terrible disasters will strike you or your home okay so even though we're all being affected by this coronavirus we're all still safe we're all still loved and god not gonna let nothing happen to us and like i said um, I could take this kind of like to the me, Morgan, and Angela level because I'm sure that's what would happen if we were in class. Even if, you know, we were to be struck with the coronavirus, God is still good. He's still that protective barrier. He's still that place of safety. We will always be good as long as we got God, okay? We're going to always be good. So I tr just wanted to briefly run through that. It's 10 verses. Please, parents, go over these verses with your kids. See what the Holy Spirit reveals to them when they're reading it, their interpretation. Please just go over the verses. Um, so now for the assignment that goes to these verses. Um, all of this really and truly does kind of feel surreal to me. And it feels like a movie. <laughs> it really does. So I, I thought about my big boys, AJ and Trey and Aiden. And I know y'all love to draw. So I want y'all to draw a picture or a movie scene that sounds fun right that depicts what's going on right now depicts how you're feeling what's going on in the world just i want you to draw how you feel right now with this coronavirus situation um express your feelings what you're worried about like how i got the older kids uh writing a letter to god expressing what they're worried about you can illustrate that in your picture okay um and like i said this one activity that I had them in mind when I came up with it is not to exclude the other kids. If y'all also want to draw a picture, a movie scene, by all means do that. If 
everybody wants to write down what they're thankful for and say a special prayer, please do that. If everybody wants to write a letter of God, a letter to God, please do that. Okay. So those are our actual lesson based activities for my place of safety, the lesson for today. Okay. And then finally, as a fun activity, something that I want y'all to do during the week, I want you all to build a tent. Um, growing up, I'm pretty sure everybody does this, but growing up, <laughs> Vint Morgan stayed building tents, pillows, blankets, sheets, from one couch to the other couch. We did that. And, you know, as little kids, when you're playing pretend, you're playing monsters, a lot of the times that's where you hide you know can't nothing get to you in your tent you can't come in this tent you know that is your place of safety when you're playing pretend with your imagination when you're younger so we thought that would be a really nice lesson activity to do during the week if you have um siblings uh no matter how old or young you are if your parents want to help you build a tent build the tent and i want you to reflect on what we've talked about today how god is our fortress so in this activity, the tent will be your fortress. And in that tent, you are protected from all dangers. You are protected. You're safe. You're loved, okay? And uh, me and Morgan are going to build a tent, and we're going to vlog it, and we're going to put it on the channel and see how it goes because we haven't done that since we were little kids. So that's the fun activity that I want y'all to do that ties into the lesson. Um, next week, if we're still like this, I will... Try to have another lesson prepared for y'all. I don't want y'all to miss out on the lesson instruction and, you know, the real life application and how the Bible, uh, you know, tells us what to do in certain situations. Well, in all situations, actually. So I don't want y'all to miss out on that. Young and um, small. I know even as young and old, small and big, uh, even as adults, it's been hard for us, you know, not physically going to church is definitely different. So... I love all y'all. I wrote <laughs> all y'all's names down at the top of the list and up here. I really do love y'all. I miss y'all. I pray that you are enjoying this time. But like I said, um, it's still real life. It's still a spiritual thing that's going on, okay? And I, my prayer is that all of you all will be a light in the world to your peers, for your family, whatever it may be. Um, that we all just continue to be the light that the world needs right now in this time of darkness. God loves us and that's what he wants us to do, okay? So y'all are safe and remember that God is our place of safety, okay? Um, feel free to leave any comments, add to the prayer, just have discussion, whatever it is that y'all want to do down there. Um, Megan and Morgan and Angela will be reading y'all's comments and interacting with y'all. Can't wait to get back in the classroom. Can't wait to see all of you. Uh, I hope this video wasn't too hard to follow along. And parents, thank you for showing it to them. I appreciate it. Um, and that's it. I love y'all. Enjoy the rest of y'all Sunday. Bye.